I have always wanted to be a preacher, yeah? So I have the suit, I have the camera, so I'm going to give this a shot. You, yes, you who is sitting on your couch, contemplating on whether to tweet us or not, and you're not sure what our tweet handle is, well, it's ntv underscore gxp, and like, I just, I just really be a horrible preacher. But you're tuned into GXP, and hope you're having a fabulous time, enjoying yourself, and, uh, you know, gearing up for Christmas, where DJ Twonjix is going to be wearing a Santa suit with shorts and gumboots, ribbons in his hair, Mickey Mouse glasses, and any, any other outrageous thing that we can think of on the show. Yeah, and I can guarantee you I think of some very, very outrageous things. But today's show is really not about Christmas. Uh, we're going to be talking about culture and Christianity. Do they mix? I mean, you know, those last funeral rites and all those things that our culture dictates that we should do. And, you know, the things that Christianity dictates that we should do. Is there a line that we should not cross? Are there things that we should not do? We're we'll talking about that in just a bit. But for now, we take you to a service for you who is not going to church this morning. Thank you. Remind me to see myself the way you see me.
sinna zaliwa zemanyi nti mukama we wamanya kazi bemviri zenira kumutwe gwange zemanyi nti mukama wazibala chino chize wendaba ngopato bulamu Kubanga bafa sebo daba banji Ukaba kankuwe china chirabo Kwe mutima ngutuze joli Kantunde o mutima kwange kuwe o joli yesu Mukama, kwa byange Mukama, mukama, we bangambula Onyame, onake kuko Mukama, ensobya, ensene benenya when call and so be, never second, did a bomb locale. Oh, Tata, Chemani, Jomani, O Mutima, Django, Chuse, Okama, Begwen Kabira, and said, Oh, when Daba, Obandeya. Wazira kwe mukama, cho ya gala, ya gala mutima Na kuwa chui kwe mukama, e ya mfiranze Kankuwa mutima, sebo kukuro kutwale Mukama, mukama, we mangambula Onyame, onage kuro Mukama, Mukama, we magambula Onyame, onage kuo Fill the whole world with the works of your hand, with the inventions, 
Time has come for us to go back to our mandates. Enough of the begging. Enough of the folding of hands. Enough of the laziness. Enough of the backwardness. We go back to our original mandates. Be fruitful and multiply. You take charge. You be in control. You don't wait for someone to come and give you handouts anymore. We are not going to wait for any sponsorship anymore. Amen. You be the one to sponsor. Amen. Be the one praying for people. Amen. Yes, be, be the one taking care of others in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Time has come for Africa to be delivered. Amen. To be delivered from depending on the brains of the white men. Hallelujah. The day God created us, He didn't forget to put any brain in our heads. Yes. That same brain that the white man had learned to use, a very good one is also placed in the heads of each African. Amen. 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 Africa, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Everything that is not made in England is not good. That's what we think. That's what we think. Until we close, you know, no matter how fine the Shetane is looking on that lady, if made in America, it's not on it, it's not good. It's not good. No. When somebody comes with a third hand clothes from America. Oh, no. Aha! <laughs> That's a good one. It's a white man that made it. <laughs> that kind of, you know, that, 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 that kind of lily living thing must be cured <laughs> now in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, it is what I call Lilliputian thinking. <laughs> you know, you know that, you know that, you know that, you no, no, they land on the lily boots. Very tiny human beings that are as tall as very big ants. <laughs> Amen. We think we are so small that we are inferior. Time has come for believers on this continent to awake and begin to demonstrate the manifold wisdom of God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That is the first thing we have been empowered to do, to be fruitful. Amen. Be fruitful. Amen. Let us see your achievements. We want to see one creation there, a business is started there that is flourishing. We want to begin to see housing estates that the architects, the builders, the consultants, the building engineers are all Africans. Amen. Amen. We don't hate the white men. In fact, we should be grateful for them. You know, praise God. If not, many of us will be dead. <laughs> we have depended on them for too long. But time has come to repay God for creating us. Amen. Time has come. Time, time, time has come to, for us to appreciate our creation by God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The second day, he says we should not just be fruitful, but to do what? To multiply. Multiply. To reproduce in large numbers of this multiplication. Amen. You know? Multiplication. To increase. Um, not just numerically. You know, to increase quantitatively. Um, to multiply means to bear fruit, not just numerically. Numerically will be one, two, after two, what do you have? Three. After three, what counts? Four. Okay? But God does not just want us to bear fruit numerically, He wants us to bear fruit geometrically. Okay? In geometric proportions. Everybody did geometry in class. In 
Is your wife saying, after two, what do you have? Four. After four, what do you have? After eight, what do you have? But I hope I still remember my geometry very well. Amen. I thought geometry is like two times two, four times four, uh -huh. sixteen times sixteen. Uh -huh. I think it is a geometrical proportion I'm talking about. A multiplication of fruitfulness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, some people, after they have paid a lot of money, too much money, you know, they have been able to build some two bedroom apartments. And now they have a 1978 hotel car standing in the garage. They have arrived. You can't talk to them anymore. They are the sheep of the neighborhood. No. no. Thank God for that fruitfulness. But it's time to multiply fruitfulness. Amen. It's time to multiply achievement. Amen. Achievement upon achievement. Hallelujah. Amen. Progress upon progress. Amen. Wealth upon wealth. Amen. Amen. It's time to multiply. It's time to multiply. Amen. You successfully won some seven souls last month. That's great. That's fruitfulness. But God is saying, go ahead and multiply. Seven times seven, forty-nine. Multiplication. Multiplication. Hallelujah. Multiply fruitfulness. Multiply fruitfulness. To be fruitful, a tree needs to be to bear one fruit. Isn't it? Amen. Amen. One fruit, isn't it? No, uh, let me see. One type of fruit. Okay, let me simplify it for you. A tree, an orange tree that has one fruit on it. Is that not fruitfulness? Can anybody say that that fruit, that tree is barren? There's a fruit, there's an orange fruit on the tree over there. Can you say the orange tree is barren? Yes. Not at all. There's a one fruit hanging there. If you wait for it to ripe, you pluck it and you can take it. That's a fruit there. But I don't like that kind of fruitfulness for my orange trees. Amen. 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 Now, if, if I come, I like to see what a branch almost breaking up because too much fruit is hanging on it. Too much fruit. So there's too much fruit on that orange tree. Hallelujah. <laughs> multiplication, multiplication, multiplication. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Believers don't need to be afraid of no too much success anymore. That's what we're created to do, to multiply success everywhere. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. People who don't know this are sitting in one corner counting all their failures. All their losses. You know, I have no certificates. I come from a bad background. You know, everybody hates me. You know, I don't have a good house to leave. You go ahead and count. But those of us who walk hand in hand with God should have a better testimony. Amen. 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 We are always counting our achievements. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Nobody helped me. I went through school. I praise God for that. You know, God gave me the grace. I went to school. Amen. Amen. I started, you know, business A. Amen. Although it failed, I started another one again. And that one succeeded now. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I first started in uh, our country here. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And they, because I saw the way the, the other business was succeeding, Established branches in seven countries. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. That will be your story from now on. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What do you need to multiply success? The blessings of God. The blessings of God. Even blind people are having many successful stories to tell. I, I know blind lawyers. But by God, you are not even blind. Hello? I know people, that guy who 
doesn't have legs or hands. You know that picture? His yes. name is so difficult to remember. Okay? Somebody puts him on this table. Oh, well, maybe even the movie can carry him sometimes. You know? And then uh, he uses his leg to open the pages of the Bible and then preach powerfully. Miracles happen, people give their lives to Jesus. But those of us that have complete hands and legs, you know, a very nice looking mouth and two eyes are full of excuses. We complain that nobody's around to help us. We complain that we didn't go to school. We complain about everything. We complain about the weather. We complain about the politicians. We complain about everything. Time has come to repent. Repent and go back to your original mandate. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Everybody who has life in him or her has no excuse for failure. Amen. And time has come for you to wake up and bear fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. What did Jesus come to do according to John chapter 10 verse 10? To give life and another. The thief coming down also to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more, more abundantly. That is God's kind of life. That is what God expects from us. The abundant life. The abundant life. You successfully completed that other building. Thank God. You can another one. Amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Come on, multiply business. Multiply success. You are successfully, that business is started successfully. You employed 10 people. Thank God. That's great achievement. You can start another business. Oh, yes. Employ people to work there. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. We must never plan to have enough just to feed our families. Don't plan to have enough to feed yourself. That is a miserable way to live. Your prayer must not be, Oh Lord, bless me, bless my wife, our children, and our cats. In Jesus' name, Amen. That is a miserable prayer. Your plan is to have much more than you need. And that's how God blesses us. He blesses us much more than we need. Much more than we need. I will not be here today if all I did was to be saved and then sit in one corner waiting for Jesus to come and take me home. I am saved with a command to go into all the world and preach the gospel. It's not enough for you to have enough money. God wants your money to travel around the whole world. Yes. Blessing people. Taking control. You know, being in charge. That is your mandate. That is our responsibility. That is our assignment. Our mandate is to have multiplied blessings and resources that will replenish the whole world. Amen. Amen. So we are going to wake up. We are going to wake up. Amen. And talking about replenish, that is the, the top thing that, that the scriptures mention in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. What does it mean to replenish? How do we replenish the earth? We are to replenish the earth by filling it up. You fill up the earth, fill it up exhaustively. We were created to fill the gap. Rather than sit down and complain about what is not working, you fill the gap with new ideas. Fill the gap with new creations. Fill the gap. Fill the gap. In John chapter 5. Uh, John chapter uh, 6, John 6 from verse 5. John 6 from verse 5. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, 
he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? Hallelujah! Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? Jesus had been preaching for several days now, crowds following him. Both the Pharisees, the Sadducees, those that did the miracles, those that wanted to watch the miracles happen, everybody followed him. Okay? And he was concerned that, wait a minute, these guys have been following me for these days, they have not eaten anything. Hello, excuse me, Philip, we need to feed all this crowd. Let's listen to the response of Philip, verse 7. Philip answered him, 200 denary worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. It's not sufficient for them, even for them to have a bite. It's not sufficient. Lord, what are you saying? You have to feed this whole crowd? One. Verse 8, one of his disciples, Andrew Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish. But well, uh, what are they among so many? This is the way our Heavenly Father wants us to be thinking. We should be thinking solution. Everybody say solution. 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 Lord, make me a solution. Yes. You are not saying it very well. Make me a solution. Make me the solution. solution to the problems of my family. Make me the solution to the problems of the country. This is the mentality that your Heavenly Father wants you to have. Yes. Amen. Amen. There is a problem. In the society, there are many problems all around. And God wants his people, his disciples, to always be thinking, what can I do to save the situation? What can I do to stop the suffering? What can I do to stop the sicknesses and the diseases? What can I do? This is what Jesus was teaching Philip. And Philip was only looking at the possibility side. Lord, Two hundred, let's say two hundred dollars worth of bread. We cannot feed every of this crowd following us, even if we take a bite. But Jesus wanted him to think the other way. There is something you can do to help this crowd. From today onward, I prophesy that the power of God will come upon you. Amen. The hand of God will be upon your life. You will not surrender to the problem anymore. Amen. You will be the solution maker. Amen. The solution creator. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, when the people saw what Paul had done, they raised their voices, saying in the loud, uh, whatever language the expression there, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Those are the people Jesus died for. Those are the disciples of Christ. Let people begin to you know, shout like this. These people were so ignorant. They have never heard the gospel. They thought Paul and Silas that they were gods. They are gods who they have been worshiping, who have come alive to help them. So shall it be said of you. Amen. And so shall it be said of you. Amen. So shall it be said of you. Amen. You know that, like they say, my village, when you help somebody to solve a problem, they say, oh, you are my God today. Amen. 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 We're wrong or right. Let the let, let let's be let's saved concerning you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. 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 With solutions. We fill the earth with solutions. Amen. You know, you are a musician. Begin to fill the earth with gospel music. Amen. Come on. Amen. We can, we're not going to surrender to all the, the trash of the unbelievers, you know. We're not going to allow the unbelieving musicians to attract our youth from the church anymore, in the name of Jesus. Uh, but when our youth now wants their own albums in the gospel 
music, let's be ready to buy them too. Yes. You know, all this mentality of receiving and receiving, you know, when somebody has spent a lot of money to go to the studio to come out with good music and you expected it to be distributed free in church. That's why they run to follow Michael Jackson because he's making a lot of money out of his own music. Church, we need to wake up. Amen. We need to wake up. Amen. Let's perpetuate righteousness all over the world in the Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We make godly things and draw people away from these horrible things that is destroying their souls. Amen. Amen. Locate what the problem is in your, in your locality. The neighborhood where you are living, what is the problem there? Of course, the first problem is the problem of sin. Amen. Amen. Lead them to Christ. Come out with more innovative methods of winning souls. It doesn't have to be from house to house. Sit down and ask the Holy Spirit. Now, this guy who I don't even see come outside of his big gates. How can I preach to him? Come out with new ways of doing things. That is our mandate. That's our responsibility. That's why Jesus came to restore the order that Adam and Eve lost. It's not for us to be a bunch of beggars and then looking for somebody to help us. We are the people the world is waiting to help them for help. They are waiting for us for help. If you don't understand that, then you are going to understand the message of the gospel. The world is waiting for you to help them. The Apostle Paul saw in the, the, the vision of the night. Somebody in Macedonia calling, yeah, please come and help us in Macedonia. That's what the world is doing to you, 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 you. The world is waiting. You are complaining that you have done anything, anything very well for a week now. If you don't wake up and put your mental capacity to work, then the period of your salvation will increase to one point. Amen. Amen. Some people, the way some people complain about their suffering is like it is the fault of somebody else that you don't have enough to eat. It's not anybody's fault that you don't have enough to eat. It's because you misunderstand the purpose for your living. True. True. When God created Adam and Eve, He didn't load them and say, hey, as you are going there, you take this down. Push, push into the garden of here, push the car. Okay. Ah. You see this big house? Okay, this one you can push it there. Oh no. He created the earth. And so you say that? The church. You rule. Hallelujah. Replenish this place. This empty place you are seeing, replenish it. Fill it up with so many inventions. Fill it up. Everything that's giving you a problem, you look for the solution. You sit down there and you complain all the all the can you imagine? And so you are sitting, you are even saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus died that you may have life and have it more abundantly. But until you wake up, you will start hopelessly. You you went you went to sleep last night without food. If you don't wake up, the nights are going to be many that you will start food and then you go to sleep without food. We have to wake up. We have to wake up. We have to wake up. A way must be found that you make more money. Every day of your life. The unbelievers have made more money and they are buying the whole world to their side. Unbelievers are waiting for angels to bring manna from heaven. The Abbeys have established big, big companies employing thousands and they are sponsoring people to be homosexuals. But the church is asleep. And we, 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 we think that by folding our hands, the, the answers will come one day. The God will hold you and I responsible for this mandate. To be fruitful, to multiply, and to fill the earth. I don't think that I, I see some, some believers, how many have made some no, let's say one thousand dollars. Say what? Only me have one thousand dollars. I was watching the television yesterday, and one guy, he's not from this country, he's not an African as usual, came here to invest some two hundred million dollars in the company. 
And of course, the rest of us have to line up there looking for a job. I beg to apply. That's a shame. That's a shame. Time has come that you wake up and turn this beautiful country into a fruitful place. Everyone who lives in this fruitful country and still complains of not having food, thank God I am not God. Don't allow me to be God even for five minutes. I will execute so many people. <laughs> after all the blessings, after all the capacity to think, after the two hands and the two legs and a wonderful brain, you know, that scientists say, with all the inventions in the world put together, we have not used up to one third. No human being in this world ever used one third of the capacity of a human brain. And you are giving excuses, telling stories of poverty all around. We are going to pray today that God will forgive. You know this one? This is my desire to walk. You got it. Lord, with all That's my prayer. I don't know about yours. I just want to be completely His. That's my desire tonight. Sing it from the depths of your soul. This is my desire. watching NTV GXP. Hope you're enjoying the show. From wherever it is that you are, you know, you might be at home, you know, chilling with a cup of coffee, watching us. You might be at the saloon getting your hair pulled, you know, you're not very happy. You know, you might be at a long journey and you have a TV in your car and you're watching the show. 
all in all, we appreciate you watching the show. And, you know, we're very glad you tuned in to us this morning. Of course, there are those of you who get in touch with us on Twitter and on Facebook. We appreciate you still. And if you haven't followed us on Twitter, please do so now. Grab your phone, your laptop, whatever it is, and just go, uh, just type NTV underscore GXP in your, you know, search, Twitter search thingy. Yeah. And, and you'll be able to find us. Or you can find us on Facebook at NTV GXP. Now, if you enjoyed the service, you're going to enjoy the next segment even more. We'll bring you something personal, something intimate, a story and a testimony of someone that is bound to inspire you this morning. My name is Boaz Atuhile. I'm from Kanungu District. And um, I'm a student at Makele University Year 2, doing Bachelor of Commerce currently, and uh, with the hopes of doing accounting. I gave my life to Christ on, uh, on, first of, uh, of, on of first of January 2012 and afterwards from that time since ever that time I've never had turned back before my life uh, before I gave my life to Christ I was a sinner who used it to be envious who was who had malice in me who could not uh, do what God requires of me I was so disobedient and uh, the worst of all, I used to drink alcohol a lot because that time even I drank alcohol, even the point of my parents starting to neglect me. But uh, when Jesus Christ came to me on that day, I said, no, it is the time that I should really accept Christ. So because I was so, I was so, I was a very drunkard in my life, uh, everyone started to neglect me. I lost trust. Everyone could not even look at me. They started to say, oh, this man. Who... So from that time, when... Uh, it was coming to when it was coming to the new year of 2012 jesus christ uh, there i received a phone call from one of my friends calling me for alcohol and another one i received another phone call someone calling me for a fellowship then when someone called me for a fellowship i had the voice telling me boaz it is time for you to go to the fellowship then when i went in a fellowship uh, that's when uh, someone talked about this man jesus christ and i had to accept him because I found my, in fact, I didn't know how I accepted Christ, I accepted Christ, but I found myself speaking about Jesus. So when I spoke about Jesus Christ, and I, I, something came into my life, and from that time, I accepted Christ. Now, since that time, um, I'm really, uh, since that time I gave my life to Christ, I've experienced the joy of Jesus Christ. I've been with Jesus Christ since that time, since 2012. I've been uh, trying to be obedient in every way, and I've tried to really to go to walk with God through the Word of God. And um, currently now at Makere University, under uh, Life Ministry, Makere Day, or Life Ministry Uganda, as many of you know it, we are doing evangelism. Currently, I do have some disciples that I really train to become other good people who can really accept the Lord. So currently I'm an evangelist at campus. I do I do one-to-one -one evangelism specifically and I'm also under training of leadership with Life Ministry Uganda because uh, when God called me, he showed me to be an evangelist. And I said, God, here I am, send me as an evangelist. So from that time, God, after God called me to be an evangelist, we began the semester by, by, the, by evangelizing first years. From there, we identified potential people who can, who can really take to another level in this country in evangelism. So we do, I do evangelism and I have a discipleship class of not more than seven people who I meet every week. And uh, really God is doing great in Makele University through this evangelism of, of, um, this evangelism of our this life ministry. And we do really know that God is really faithful to us and is going to take this campus to another level through this evangelism. Besides that, I do train in leadership and uh, some people who are interested in leadership and uh, who need leadership skills. So we are doing that and uh, we know that God is faithful to us and is going to take us to another level in all things that we do. So thank you so much for listening to me and I really love to speak to you once more time about evangelism and uh, may God surely bless you. Come on, 
mwamini Jina lile lililo kataliwa na washi Jina, 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 Jina,
enjoyed the testimony. Now, if you, you know, take some time off and turn the pages of your Bible. Somewhere in Matthew, it says, let your light shine before men so that they may see your good deeds and glorify uh, your Father in heaven. That's what the next segment of the show is about. Shining a light on people who are taking the gospel through the way they live to other people. Here's our star profile on JXP this morning. My name is Father Joseph Fatidungo. I'm a priest of the Archdiocese of Kampala. 
and uh, right now I'm the assistant chaplain here at St. Augustine Chapel Macquarie University. I've been a priest 18 years. I was born and raised uh, in the village of Busukuma. It's on uh, Kampala Zero Road. And I went to St. Chizito Primary School in Nabitaro. By then it was in Gaiza Parish, but right now we have our separate parish. It's called Nabitaro Parish, or Our Lady of Sorrows. Uh, Nabitaro Parish. I was inspired to become a priest when I was still in a primary school. So right away, when I was a child in primary school, I knew what I wanted to become. I was inspired by priests. There's a priest who used to come uh, to say mass for us. And then we had uh, an uncle in the family, Bishop Adrian Dungu, uh, the late. So all those were great inspirations. Just what it could be like there to do all the work that they, they do. So after primary school, I straight away went to Nyenga Seminary, St. Joseph Seminary in Nyenga, uh, towards Jinja. And I was there for both O level and A level. We are the pioneers of the A level section, and we are very proud of that, to be pioneers of that uh, section. So after Nyenga Seminary, six years in Nyenga, I went to Katigondo Seminary, uh, three years. Then I went for my internship in Chisugi Seminary. It's called Pastoral Spiritual Year. After that, I went to uh, St. Mary's Seminary, Gaba, and I spent there one year, and then I got a scholarship to go to the United States of America. I went to California, so that was 1992, and um, I spent there three years for my theological studies. Then, in 1995, I came back for my ordination. I was ordained at Norvaga Cathedral uh, on the 22nd of July, 1995. My first assignment was uh, in Kangulumira. By then it was one diocese of Kampala, Kampala Diocese, uh, but now it is Lukasi Diocese. So in Kangulumira Parish I was there for one year, then I was taken to St. Mbaga Seminary as a teacher. I was there for three years. After that I went back to the United States for more studies. And I came back in 2005. I was sent to Moelele Parish, which was a new parish where the founding fathers, uh, the Father Makango was the parish priest and I was the assistant. I was there for nine, I think it was ten months. Then I went back to St. Timbaga Seminary as a teacher. I was there one year and then I was given this appointment where I am right now uh, as an assistant chaplain here at St. Augustine Makerele. So I'm very happy to be a priest. I don't regret the decision that I made, and I thank the Lord for uh, for that gift of the priesthood every day in my prayers. I'm grateful to the Lord uh, for this gift of the priesthood, and I'm grateful for uh, the work that I do as a priest. What brings me joy uh, in my priesthood is to be able to help, to help people, spiritually, materially, or otherwise. That gives me great joy. Yeah, The different sacraments that we celebrate, only people come looking for God. That gives me joy. And I feel sad when I'm not able to help, you know, as much as I, I would have wished to. Because I'm limited. You know, I'm limited by time and space and resources and so on. But what gives me great joy is to be able to help. The sacraments that we celebrate help us to receive God's life, spiritual life. When parents come and bring their children here, you know, to be baptized, I'm so happy to be part of that to prepare them and then baptize them and introduce them to the family of God. When people come uh, looking for forgiveness, looking for peace with God, reconciliation, my goodness, that gives me joy. When people come and they're in love, they want to commit themselves to God through marriage, that's wonderful to be, for me to be part of their journey. All the other sacraments, when people come to celebrate Mass, the Eucharist, to receive the Lord in that special way, in which the Lord chose to uh, remain with us in the Eucharist. People yearning to give their lives to God, that is wonderful. So uh, I'm very happy with the work I, that I do. And uh, I just pray that, you know, uh, I'll do much more. I'll do much more as a priest. And um, we encourage people, you know, the vocations that we choose is what you choose and the level of commitment that you give yourself to, okay? I've chosen to become a priest, and with God's grace, I became one, and I've committed my life to serving God. You know, uh, the church exists in the world to remind us that we are not 
of this world. We are in this world, but we are not uh, of this world. So we always need to know the things that matter. You know, faith, love, everything that Jesus Christ stands for. That's what we remind the people about. Because sometimes we tend to be carried away by the things and attractions of this world, you know, money, power, and so on, to the extent of killing people, and so on, other things. So the church exists in the world to remind the world of things that do matter. And so I'm very proud to be part of that. And I hope that uh, in the work that I do, I continue to become a better and better priest, and I continue to inspire more people, you know. Right now, the seminaries in Uganda, we are happy to be uh, to have seminaries full, you know, we have a lot of vocations, young people wishing to become priests. We are very happy with that response and we pray that God will continue to give us more uh, priests as we continue the mission of Christ in this world. So that's what I do and I'm very happy and I wish many more young men would come up uh, to share in this mission of Christ as priests. Oh
heart's created. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Christ the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet on this happy morning, Jesus, to thee be glory give. Word of the Father, now in flesh appearing, oh, come, let us adore him, oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Sing, of angels, sing in exaltation, sing on his faces and so Watching NTV GXP, hope you're still enjoying the show uh, just as much as I am. I mean, I enjoyed the service, it was absolutely amazing. There was the testimony, it was absolutely inspiring. And the star profile that sort of makes you wonder hmm, 
Zenkoze Ochi. I mean, what is it that I've done that is inspiring someone else? And now, you know, for the next segment of the show, we get to sit down and talk about something that's absolutely important, culture and Christianity. Where do they meet? If they meet, I 